Hello, beautiful bookish people. My name is Ross, if you have forgotten, which I doubt. I'm so memorable. As you know, I am the teacher of all things bookish and good. And today, we are giving you the true Greek gods via YA authors. Does that make sense? I hope so, because here we go. Yep, that's me. Right now, we're gonna kinda, kinda start with some legends. We're not gonna hit you right off the bat with Zeus. That would be too much, that would be too much. First, we're gonna talk about Hercules. As you know, Hercules has gone on many missions. He's a demigod of Zeus. Very powerful, very strong, but not a god. Once he died, he just kinda became a constellation. So who, you may ask, is our Hercules in our bookish world? It's Pierce Brown, everybody. Why, yes, he does have the muscles and the face to play Hercules, but also his stories are strong. But he's not, you know, a, a god. Not yet, at least. He might work himself up there, but he kind of only has tackled one series, so therefore cannot identify as a god. I don't make the lesson plans. I just teach it to you. Next, my favorite, Hestia. Hestia, the goddess of the hearth, the goddess of the fire, but not in so much a fire that will burn you, but in um, a fire that brings us all together. It's like a family, if you will. She's kind of the reason we're here. Our Hestia is Stephanie Maya. You know, not as powerful as she once was, of course. She once ruled the YA genre. But, yes, we agree. She impacted us so much that our genre will never be the same. And for that, Stephanie, we thank you. We appreciate you. Moving on. Hephaestus. Now, here is uh, the god of the forge. Now, Hephaestus is an overworker. He's a workaholic, if you will. He's very much uh, grounded in his, his own ideas. Who's going to play with fire, you know what I mean, and, and mess you up? Why, of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is Jay Kristoff. He kind of has his hands in both adult and YA, but... Once you read it, you'll never be the same. Anywho, moving along to Hermes, arguably my favorite god. He just kind of likes to stir the pot. He just kind of roams around Olympus delivering messages willy-nilly. You kind of never know what this is, is, is going to be up to, you know? Therefore, the god of chaos is Maggie freaking Steve Otter. I know. It's crazy how much these gods align with each other. Who do we have next? Ah, Aphrodite. Arguably, one of the most powerful gods. Yes, I did read A Lovely War. Aphrodite is way more than beauty and love. She's powerful. She is ambitious. She knows what she's doing. But the thing about Aphrodite is kind of like, it's messy. You know, the family always gets involved, but the thing about love is it's, it's not logical. So who is, who is the queen of love stories with familial elements? It's one of my favorite authors, Nina Moreno. I have yet to write a love story that I didn't love because it's filled with nuance and familial relationships that I never get tired of. Moving on, Dionysus, what a guy. Can I say the weird one? He's the god of parties, and uh, he's so, so, so chaotic. But who is free-loving, but I also have to be a little drunk to read their stories? Victoria Aviard. She kind of tells the stories we kind of all have heard before in um, a very soft fantasy world, but they're very chaotic. Like, Victoria Aviard would be a chaotic mutual. Don't argue with me. You know it's true. Let's move on. Demeter. Oh, I love Demeter. Now, Demeter is uh, Persephone's mother. If I can say, she's pretty bitter. Kind of dramatic. Hades takes Persephone, and Demeter can't handle it, and therefore makes things die. So, as we know, Demeter is filled with her dramatics and also flowery prose. So who is it? It's Libra Bray. Every time I read a Little Grey book, I don't know what I'm getting into. But I don't care because I love her. I love the writing style. I love the dramatics. Therefore, she is Demeter. Aren't you glad you're getting this history lesson now? Moving on. All right, Artemis. 
Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, the classic ragtag team of huntress who fight evil in the forest. We love that. She exudes the feminist energy that we all want. But here's the thing about Artemis. She also has a sensitive side. She's a kickbutt queen, but also has internal struggles. Therefore, Artemis is Kristen Kashua. She wrote Graceling, Bitter Blue, Fire, but also switched it up. But also wrote Jane Unlimited. So yes, we get a fiery fantasy queen who is also feminist, but also with Jane Unlimited, the eternal struggle that we all need. Moving on, which leads us into her twin brother, Apollo. I love Apollo, but I have a weird relationship with him. He is the god of the sun. Very charismatic, probably writes really bad poetry, but also doesn't think about the repercussions of things. He's gonna go with his heart no matter what. I think Apollo is John Green, everybody. Like I said, has really good intentions, just doesn't think about the repercussions of everything. You still love him, you still adore him. Also, he's a sunshine baby. He's so lovable that you want to be best friends with him, even though you know it might get you into trouble. I can't explain it anymore. You know what I mean? History is writing itself. Which moves us into Ares. Oof, the god of war. Ooh, the god of power. He's unpredictable. At least, that's what I get when I read his myths. When Ares, when Ares, when he wants to do something, he puts his all in it. He's the god of war, the god of strategy, the god of tact. Which means he's tactful, but also passionate. Ah, Ares is. Tony Anayemi. If I was gonna trust anybody to be the god of war, trust Tony. Ooh, thinks everything through. The best battle scenes you will ever read. He crosses his T's and dots his eyes. Like, you maybe think like this one little detail from book one will not come in handy, but it does. Next, moving on, ah, oh, one of my favorites, the mind child of Zeus, Athena. Now, she's an intelligent, powerful, also tactful. See, Athena will not only figure out how to beat you, but Athena will figure out how to beat you in the most brutal way possible. Like, do not make an enemy of Athena, just saying. So, who is an author who thinks things through, is an intellectual, and maybe came from someone else's brain? Of course, it's Victoria Schwab. Now, I might be a little, just a little, biased. Because I am reading A Darker Shade of Magic right now and loving it. She can handle fantasy, she can handle urban fantasy, she can even handle sci-fi. And her concepts are quite honestly genius. Everything about Victoria Schwab is a chef's kiss. Moving on, our next goddess is Persephone. Persephone is one of my favorite goddesses. She is the god of spring and a true, a true Slytherin woman. She figures out how to be with Hades and her mom and please both. So, who is Persephone? None other than Booktube's favorite, Holly Black. The prose, the Slytherin women, the familial, familial relationship, it's all there. Oh my gosh, I can't get this cat. I didn't say it. The curriculum did, and the curriculum never lies. I am just trying to inform you on our Greek gods. That's all I'm saying. Next, now we're on to the exciting part. We have the big three in Hera. Hades. One of my bestest boys. He's intense and would be an emo kid today. There's no lie. Don't tell me otherwise. I know myself. I know my Greek gods. He would kind of, he would rather be left alone than talk to you. Who's like kind of a, uh, an adult emo kid, wears all black, and plays with your emotion with their books. Why is Lee Bardugo? And kind of always plays with those uh, darker schemes that, if you've read 9,000, you know where I'm coming from because we're literally going to hell. So, Lee Bardugo is an adult emo kid and I love it. Alright, moving on to Poseidon. Poseidon is the god of the sea, 
um, horses and earthquakes. He's kind of a triple threat in different elements. Kind of who is an author who's very successful in different series from that are very different from each other. Let me show you. That Poseidon is our Marie Lu. Now listen, Marie Lu has kind of tackled all the genres. You know, she's got legend. Boom! Dystopian. She came out with War Cross and then that sci-fi. And then her newest release in 2020 is uh, talking about Mozart's sister. Excuse me? Historical fiction? Ma'am? Can you pick a genre? Don't, because I love it. Moving on to um, Hera. Hera is the, the goddess of motherhood, but the white picket fence motherhood. Everything kind of has to be perfect. She would definitely be a soccer mom, fitting uh, every one of her children into the perfect place that she thinks that they need to be. And so, our Hera is definitely <laughs> Sarah J. Mass. They both definitely have their problems, but we both love them uh, equally for different reasons. Sarah J. Mass kind of similar to Hera in that every aspect of her perfect fantasy romance has to um, work together, you know, it's very straight, very white, um, just like Hera. Um, anywho, moving right along, Zeus, who is our, who's our Greek god of the sky, you know, who's, who's our ruler, who? Who can handle this power? Ah, Zeus turns sky war into deep political intrigue that will have you questioning whether you're right or you're wrong, because Ah, Zeus has sky wars. Not Star Wars, but Sky Wars, that um, might have you falling from heaven. And if you've read her books, I bet you know who it is. It's Lainey freaking Taylor. And honestly, I feel safe knowing that Lainey Taylor is in charge, because she will do a good job. I have comfort in knowing that our ruler has pink hair. Honestly, I love Lainey Taylor. In my eyes, she can do no wrong. That has been our Greek history lesson for today of the YA genre, the true Greek gods of today, if I don't say so myself. But anywho, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and keep reading and all that jazz. Oh my gosh, this is hurting my back. This was not good for my dyslexia to put all the H's together. I can't like already start laughing at myself. He has uh, been the leader of a ship. <laughs> he took down a, a cyclops. Mm, mm, mm. There's somebody outside. I'm gonna get really quiet and awkward. And you know, like Marie Lou definitely has that big three energy. Sorry, Rhiannon just texted me. We both agree we don't like Lila Bard. Arguably, the one of what, what? And wrote, oh no, I forgot what it was called. Oh my gosh, I messed up!